General Motors is in serious trouble, and it isn't Tesla that is the cause, or at least not yet. They have just been dethroned by Toyota as America's number one vehicle manufacturer, a position they have defended for the last 80 years. Now, this is not an EV issue. This is good old-fashioned supply chain problems, product mix, and being unable to satisfy the needs of the American consumer. In other words, this is General Motors' home ground in a game in which they reportedly wrote the rules. To get perspective on the challenge GM is facing right now, we have to haul out the classics. The Ansoff Matrix was a strategic tool developed in the late 50s, which basically summarizes four broad stroke options for GM to grow based on various combinations of existing products, existing markets, new products and new markets. Now, new markets is basically off the table for GM. They have actually been withdrawing from international markets to focus on their home advantage or former home advantage. I want to focus on the traditional quadrants, how GM is going to grow either their market or their market share. We all know that marketing managers and strategists like to segment their markets. And in the auto market, we have many segmentation strategies. We have crossover vehicles, pickup trucks, SUVs, compact SUVs, sedans, hatchbacks, commercial vehicles, vans, the list goes on. Now, the goal is to develop your product in response to these market segments. And where you are unable to satisfy a certain segment need, a clever marketer will figure out a way to address the need with another product. They might convince pickup truck enthusiasts to go the crossover route or convince crossover enthusiasts that SUVs are basically the same thing. The problem for GM is that a new market segment has formed over the last several years, electric vehicles. And this segment is characterized by people who are absolutely dogmatic in their needs. You will not convince someone sitting in the EV camp to switch over to an internal combustion engine vehicle. Now, say it was a problem for GM. And this is because GM currently does not have a product to satisfy the segment, and it is growing rapidly. My estimate is that at least 1 million EVs will be sold in the US in 2022. A more optimistic forecast would put this figure closer to 1.4 million. Since Ford has announced production targets of 150,000 F-150s and 200,000 Mach-Es by 2023, and Rivian has just boosted their target to 200,000 R1Ts, and I put Tesla down for at least a million vehicles on their own for the US market. And then we have the imports, although I think it is going to be difficult for them given the local production requirements for the tax incentives. So 10% of the US auto market is now unobtainable for GM in 2022. They simply cannot satisfy the market sector with a product. But the 10% number is really only based on production volumes. There is a second leg to this market sector, and that is the number of consumers that are prepared to wait for their EVs. This must be at least another 1 million to 1.4 million consumers. So GM's TAM has now shrunk by a number that is close to 20%. Now, it is not like GM isn't making any noise here. But GM is only able to deliver the Hummer EV, a $110,000 machine with a completely classified run rate. So we can safely say that they're being hand-built for now with very low volumes. The Chevy Bolt is making a comeback with no run rate information available. So maybe they can claw something back here assuming they can overcome the now completely stained consumer relationship with that brand. And we have the Lyric, also being labeled as a 2023 vehicle. But this is again a luxury segment, so not in the high volume sector. And last, we have the Equinox and the Blazer, which GM claims will be available in 2023, but with again, no other information available. The lack of transparency from GM in terms of production capability must really be viewed in conjunction with the absolute bollocks that has been flowing out of their corporate communications recently. This is a company that has no plan, only intentions. Until they present real commitments to production targets, we have to take everything they promise with a pinch of salt. And now we get to 2023. By 2023, Ford and Rivian will be pumping out at full volume, and Tesla will have doubled their production. The US EV market will have grown to at least 3 million vehicles sold, so 20% of the total accessible market. And again, you will have the second leg of this market sector, easily another 20% of consumers prepared to wait their turn. And still, GM will not have a product to satisfy the demand. Since only now will they have started with a Silverado, Lyric, and maybe Equinox and Blazer. But remember, GM will only have started production by then. 
and we know that it takes a year or so to get your production volume streamlined. But in the meantime, GM is going to be resolving their chip shortage issues and will be back to full production of their existing internal combustion engine portfolio. They will be joining vehicle manufacturer number one in the US, Toyota, who will also be streamlining production and will also have no product to satisfy the EV segment. So number one and number two are increasing production to fight for a declining market. More supply with diminishing demand. And the laws of economics dictate that a price drop has to follow. Cue the two for one specials. So for GM, 2022 will be characterized by A, a reduction in sales volumes, and B, a reduction in price. And this will be exasperated in 2023, since it is currently highly unlikely that GM's EV product range will yet be profitable. Now as a parting thought, generally I don't like to be overly negative on company prospects, but I think that GM's behavior of late is reprehensible. I think that a level of humility would go a long way to repairing the broken image, but they will most likely not do that. So, bookmark this statement. GM will be posting a loss by Q4 2022. They will have dropped to at least number three in the US in terms of market share, and will be staring at 2023 presenting an even tougher year for them. And I'll leave it at that. Thank you for listening. Please hit the like button if you like this content and stay subscribed to my channel.